I think we can all agree good games don't overstay their welcome. I'm going to be using the last hope bunker, zombie survival, as my example for this discussion. Full disclosure, I received a free review key of this game. If you haven't noticed by now, or are new to the channel, I'm a massive fan of zombie games. I also have quite a few bones to pick with zombie games. The key issue with most zombie games is they never end. Last Hope Bunker does not have that issue, and it highlights how much playing to your strengths and getting out while the getting is good makes for a good game. There are too many games out there that have a strong start and then peter off. Now, this is usually caused by a lack of budget or ballooning scope, but that is not always true. A good example for those two issues would be Metal Gear Solid 5. To this very day, people are still arguing whether it was unfinished or if the second half just kind of sucked compared to the first. In the zombie genre, I think it's mostly caused by every single dev wanting a viral forever game like Project Zomboid and Seven Days to Die. Also, zombies are the easiest enemy to program for a survival crafter game. What kind of game is Last Hope Bunker? It's an isometric linear story-based action game. You have a main base, the bunker, that acts as a safe spot you return to between quests and when you need to craft more ammo. Yes, there is a whole crafting part of the game, but do not assume it's going to be grindy or require grinding. If you follow the storyline, you will be handed 99% of what you need to upgrade your gear and told when to do so. You'll notice you have three stat bars, health, stamina, and your air filter. The air filter acts as a way to block you from exploring farther than you should story-wise. It doesn't outright stop you from doing so, rather it makes you use up your air filters much faster. Instead of doing an immersion breaking hard stop, they use a guiding hand. That's why they basically hand you the materials to upgrade your gear when appropriate. The only thing you need to grind for is ammo. If you get a little too distracted while fighting a zombie spawner or struggle with a boss, you can run out of ammo and have to go back to grind a bit of metal to craft more. I only ran out of ammo once in my playthrough. I didn't realize I was fighting several spawners and blew through my ammo. Luckily, I had the materials on hand to craft more. But until the next upgrade point, ammo was a little light. Now let's get into this whole theory of not overstaying your welcome. You could very easily play this game and say it's terrible. It barely has any music at all. What it does have is ambient background stuff. The sound design is perfectly fine at best and terrible at worst. The story is clearly translated, and to be honest, it exists to make you fight zombies. There's like three in-game cutscenes, and they are comically bad. I'll give you a taste. Shoot them. Luckily, as you just saw, they are a couple seconds long and put you right back into the gameplay. The movement is nice and tight. The shooting suffers from the common isometric issue of easily missing your target in the 3D world but it does have some aim assist that occasionally kicks in to help you. Blasting down a line of zombies feels good, as it should for a zombie blasting game. The map surprised me. It is linear, which will annoy some of you, as the path is very laid out and fenced off, but there are a couple spots with verticality I did not expect in this tier of game. Particularly, the hospital is well designed, with you weaving in and out of the building while going between floors and the basement to finally reach your goal. The enemies themselves are not very challenging and only become a problem when mixing multiple types with overwhelming numbers. The basic zombies can barely hit you as long as you keep moving away from them, which is perfectly fine for the most basic enemy. It gets bad when the bosses also suffer from this problem as they attempt to melee you. Mind they have two or three mechanics each, so it's not just a kiting fest. That being said, the boss fights are pretty subpar and probably could have hammed up their gimmicks a bit more. The story is nothing to write about. First of all, it's clearly translated. The game didn't even start in English for me the first time. The crafting mechanic may as well have not existed. The only reason I can see for it is to create pressure as you run out of ammo. They could have achieved this by refilling your ammo when you return to the bunker, forcing you to conserve ammo between checkpoints. I don't know what the pricing of this game will be as it comes out on April 9th, but I can't imagine it being anything other than cheap. If it's below $10 US, I'd recommend it to anyone stuck looking at their Steam library at 2am and just needs to mindlessly blast through some zombies for a couple hours. Mind, this area of the price scale is becoming very competitive, so if it's anything more than that, I'd wait for a sale. After all that, you're probably wondering why I don't think the game is terrible. Well, despite being mediocre in so many ways, it avoids doing anything bad for more than a minute. It also ends within 20 minutes of running out of new content. Last Hope Bunker doesn't waste your time. That is step one of not overstaying your welcome. For example, don't add in a time waster crafting system to grind through. I'll admit that from the moment I saw the crafting and how long it takes to pick up materials, I thought I was going to get sent on a one hour grinding mission. Instead, several quests asking for materials autocomplete because I had plenty on hand. Step two is keeping your story short. It is much more preferable to end a game on a high note and wanting more than to allow your players to give up partway through a longer storyline. How do we determine the correct length? I think this one is really simple. We have the obvious example of completion rate. 
If the majority of players finish the game, then it's clear that the length is appropriate. On the other hand, we have a more extreme metric. Do the people who finish the game go in for round two almost immediately? If that is true, then you've made a good game, and it definitely did not overstay its welcome, but it may be too short. I beat Last Hope Bunker in about two hours and 30 minutes. I do not feel it was too short or too long. I think it's exactly the length it should be. A recent example for a game that may have been too short would be Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. It takes around 18 hours to finish Armored Core 6, and plenty of players ended it asking for more. Even more interestingly, many went ahead and immediately beat the game a second time for the extra story features, even though you are mostly playing the same thing twice. If you look at the achievements for Armored Core 6, it appears more than 60% of players have completed one of the endings. That is a wildly high number for an 18 hour long game, and that brings us to the last and final step for a game to avoid overstaying its welcome. In the game when you run out of new features or mechanics to learn. No, I don't mean immediately end it. You shouldn't be playing through a tutorial 30 minutes before the game ends. What I mean is the moment you start repeating old mechanics without introducing new ones, you need to start the timer for finishing up. Within an hour or two, the story should wrap up. I'll use Last Hope Bunker's map to break this down as spoiler free as possible. This is the map for the game. There's the bunker and five zones. In the first zone, you are introduced to two types of normal zombie and the zombie spawner mechanic. The tutorial ends about halfway through this zone after teaching you about stealth. In the second zone, you encounter a third normal zombie type, are pushed towards using the second weapon, and fight your first boss. In the third zone, you fight your second boss, receive ammo for the third weapon, and are introduced to many bosses in the form of reusing bosses. In the fourth zone, you fight one more new boss, which pushes you to use the third weapon and fight a couple mini bosses as part of a quest. At this point, the game is done introducing mechanics and new features. The final zone is more story driven. You fight the same things you have before, but it ups the difficulty a bit by overwhelming you with numbers. Then you go fight the final boss, which isn't really a boss at all, and reuses a mechanic you already know. The story finishes and just leaves you to do whatever you want without forcing you to start a new save. That's how Last Hope Bunker manages to avoid overstaying its welcome. It's about two and a half hours long. While it doesn't have much content, the devs knew not to stretch it out. There are games out there with significantly higher budgets and skill levels that taint the feeling of the game by stretching it out. Days Gone has one of the longest stories I've ever played. The game plays the intro cutscene for you when you start, and then a few hours of gameplay later plays the intro cutscene again as part of an even longer cutscene. I legit watched the same few minute long cutscene twice in one sitting because I thought surely something must be different in order for them to show it again. Nothing was different. Almost every review of Days Gone criticizes it for the unnecessarily long story, but neglects to mention that it has that level of mental insult right in the beginning. I'd love to state that dragging a game out is a modern issue, but Dragon Quest VII came out in 2000. I remember renting that game two times for a week each and having to give up something like 70 hours in because I was still on the first disc. Yeah, it was one of those two disc monstrosities. Unlike Days Gone, which needed to cut out 10 hours of story, Dragon Quest VII could be split into several independent games. The introduction alone is like 40 minutes long. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the ramble. Peace out.